something. Count these tears you might see fall from my face. All oh, joy. I know it's so many people that don't show any type of emotions publicly, but joy is not like that. I am a whole human being. I laugh. I cry. Um, it's just when I went, y'all. When I think of the goodness of Big Daddy, like when I think about, see, I, I, it take when people was like, Joy, why you hadn't done a live yet? Y'all don't understand. Sometimes before I go live, it deals with me like this right here. Oh my God, I didn't realize I was going to get full because I was just so focused on uh, sharing this with somebody that needs to hear this, but as I read it, I found out that I needed to hear it too. I found out, you know what I'm saying? That, um, oh, we all be needing to be encouraged. So this morning, y'all, uh, my fullness, the tears may overflow and it may be a little overwhelming, but please count it all joy. Any of my mistakes, any of whatever that may come with this, excuse it. Understand, I can't apologize. Just excuse it if it offends you, but I'm I do what I have to do. And so, y'all, I was just thinking about something. I, I was getting ready. I was thinking about it all week. I was thinking about um, the widow women. Understand, it was two widow women that st stood out to me. Um, back when Elijah, back in the New Testament, when Elijah, you know, had to go to the widow's woman's house, um, she was preparing for death because her husband died. She had no money and she had no food and she was preparing um, for death. But a blessing got sent to her house right when she thought it was all over. Okay. But I don't want to talk about that particular um, widow woman. I want to talk about the widow woman in Luke chapter seven, um, because I understand that uh, a lot of people prepares more for a funeral, a funeral versus preparing for life. I don't really see many people these days um, embracing the joys and the wows and the o's that comes with life. Um, I see that so many people have been defeated for so long that they walk in fear, like it scares the hell out of them. It if a lot of stuff good happening to them, um, immediately the enemy try to steal their joy away. Something going to happen. You remember the last time, you know, he would try to remind us of different traumas, of different heartaches, of different pains, of different, different, um, disappointments. But I, I got to tell y'all about this one right here. You guys, it says, um, uh, I'm going to start at 11. It said, the topic is Jesus brings a woman's son back to life. It said the next day Jesus had and his followers went down to a town called Nain. A big crowd was traveling with them. When Jesus came near the town gate, he saw some people carrying a dead body. It was the only son of a woman who was a widow. Walking with her were many other people from the town. But when the Lord saw the woman, he felt very sorry for her and said, don't cry. He walked to the co open coffin. Now, mind you, the child was in the coffin. The child was dead, okay? Um, and he touched the coffin. The men who were carrying the coffin stopped. Jesus spoke to the dead son. Then the boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Everyone was filled with fear. They began praising God and said, a great prophet is here with us and God is taking care of his people. Did y'all hear that part? Big daddy, y'all know I call big daddy. God is my big daddy, okay? Okay, it says big daddy is taking care of his people. The news about Jesus spread all over Judea and to all the other places around them. Now listen. It's so many things that stood out to me about this. Number one, the woman was experiencing, I need to go bury my son. My son is dead. Everything showed that her son had died. She didn't even know who was coming to town that day. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody don't know who's coming to Varosta 
today. Uh, uh, I think back years, 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 years ago, my kids was in uh, high school and, and, and I was having hard times and it was time for uh, them to go back to school and it was, I needed to get them some school clothes, right? And I, I remember my mother, my, not my birth mother, my other mother, I remember she called me from New, New Jersey and she said, I was just thinking about you and I was like, thank you. And it would do, we had our mother-daughter talk and that was it. I didn't tell her what was going on. So I remember preparing to have to go home. I went on a fast. I remember preparing to have to go home and tell my kids, look, I'm not going to be able to do anything for you. Um, and when I can, you know, your mama will, which I always do. This is what I was preparing in my heart. But I didn't know. I saw this shadow. Now, mind you, I talked to my godmother on a Wednesday. But on a Saturday morning, she was 17 hours away from me, y'all. My godmother walked in my beauty salon and said, I didn't like how you sounded. Something wasn't right. So I had to come and check on you. And so she took me to belts and did everything that I needed. What are you saying, Joy? It's not about the things I'm saying to somebody. You're preparing to give the bad news, but you don't know. Like that Megan Thee Stallion just show up with the good news box. You don't know who's about to show up in your life. Well, good news. I know you got evidence that is dead. I know that th your situation is in the coffin. You ready to close the door and bury that thing. I know this, but let me tell y'all something. When I think back over my life, period, period, period. When I prepared for the worst, Big Daddy showed up and did the doggone thing. And I understand that when you are full of life, it's so many people so used. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm in this little town called Valdosta, Georgia. And I've never seen something the way I see it. Uh, when people get killed and when people die, this town right here celebrate the wrong stuff. They celebrate. They want to show love. They want to celebrate. They want to, when, when people die or somebody get killed, they had the biggest memorials. They had the biggest celebrations. They, they you know, they, they just celebrate. They party for death. But my, oh my. And then this town right here, they don't really like to go to celebrations. They don't really like to go to weddings like that. They don't really like to see people that had that victory dance. That they overcame the very situation that they thought was going to kill them. That's the kind of town I live in. I don't know where you're from and I don't know where you're living. But I stay in a town that they would rather be there for you in deaths. But it's a problem being there for you in hope. In faith, with joy, with peace, with victory dance. When you dance, and let me tell y'all something, because oh my goodness. When I and when when God, Big Daddy, came through for me, y'all, I had to do the victory dance. I never forget I was in the store. And I ain't talking about holy because I'm, I'm mixed. I'm a little hood. I'm sassy, classy, all the above. So I'm not saying I go around sprinkling that water that I done bought off TV. And whoo, every time you say something to me, huh, and I ain't talking in tongues every time you say to me. I ain't calling everybody a devil. Name. I'm not that kind of person. Understand? But let me tell y'all something. Every now and then when we get a little bougie, a little too bougie for Big Daddy, he'll give us a glimpse. I don't know about you, but he'll give me a glimpse. Y'all, I got two testimonies, but my children ain't mature enough for me to go public with it yet. But when I tell y'all what it did for me, I got to respect my kids first. But when the father released me to get his testimony, y'all going to understand why at this very moment I'm so full. But let me tell y'all something. I was in the store and God gave me a glimpse of some things that it blocked. That it was sent to take me out. It was sent to try to make me prepare for a funeral. It was sent to try to make me prepare for a burial. But he gave me a glimpse. I told y'all I can't tell y'all yet. But when he gave me that glimpse of how he blocked it, how he stopped it, how he boomerang with other sent to try to destroy what was mine. When he gave me that glimpse, y'all, I was in the store and I ain't realizing. And I was telling God, thank you, Lord. See, I come from a family on one side. They want you to be so deep.
dignified. You ain't supposed to make no noise. You're not supposed to scream and shout. You're supposed to. Well, I don't. That's them. Let me talk about me. When I think about how he stopped the burial. When I think about how he stopped the funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I could do is say, Lord, I thank you. And so the girl didn't understand my praise. Hell, I didn't understand it. All I did was I was walking thinking I'm going to go and get some cones. And then he showed me something he blocked. He showed me something. He stopped real quick. And I just said, Lord, I thank you. And the lady said, ma'am, you need to come on and pay for this. But let me tell you what else he did. When it was time to pay for it, it didn't cost me a thing. So I'm telling that person out there, I don't know who you are. I don't know her, what mother you are. I don't know what auntie you are. I don't know what business owner you are. I, I don't know what you are, who you are, and who I'm talking with. I want you to pull out your best. I decided to pull out some pearls today. And you know when you be preparing for something good, you got negative people saying, what you getting ready to do? Well, where you going? Well, why you looking like that? Well, I want you to pull out the best of the best, the crumb of the crumbs. Understand what I'm telling you. And I want you to look your best. So then when somebody say, where you going? Look at them and tell them it's not a funeral. When they say, where you going? Tell them I'm going to party. Because I'm going to live. I'm going to this victory party. Understand what I'm saying? And I'm going to celebrate. I'm tired of everybody just looking cute for black clothing uploads from a funeral. I dare you. When it's time for you to celebrate your victories, I, I dare you to upload. To allow the joy of the Lord to illuminate all for you. And so that your joy can be somebody else's strength, you guys. I got to share with something with y'all that I saw at Publix. Let me go get this book really quick. Hold on. Okay, you guys, it's this book. I was in public grocery store, right? And it's not because my name is on this. Y'all don't even understand the backdrop about my name. Understand. Whew. I go through a lot to have the name Joy. Like the enemy hates that my name is Joy. But in this book, it said the power of joy. See, I found out something. Every day. The enemy is going to come to try to rob you of your joy. And when he rob you of your joy, you don't have any power. So you got to protect that joy. Because the, the Bible says uh, the joy in Nehemiah 8. And a lot of people start at 10. But if you go up to 7 and, and bring that thing on down. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let, let me tell y'all something. Do y'all know in Nehemiah Chapter 8, because people love to say, the joy of the Lord is my strength, right? That ain't, do y'all know what that was birthed from? They were preparing for a death. They had on um, dirty clothing, sack life clothing. Let me, I, I, I got to tell y'all about this. They had on um, sack like clothing, and it was preparing for the worst in Nehemiah 8 and 10. Understand, but if you go up, this this is what I love that was said. We're gonna start at verse 9, y'all. 8 and 9. Nehemiah the governor, as were the, the priests and teacher, and the Levites who were teaching the people spoke. They said, Today, y'all don't hear me. Today is a special day. To the Lord your God. Don't be sad today. This is the word y'all. This is not joy. Don't be sad today. Because I, I fight like hell. Because I choose not to be sad. Every sing, single day. Like I choose 
joy. And I understand this. When you choose joy and you choose not to cry, people don't like you. Like people roll their eyes and then because I really have joy. But I don't understand the fight to maintain that joy and the stuff that comes my way, uh, that comes to rob me of it. I have to remember what my strength is. And they say, don't be sad and cry today. Not the day. I I'm going to mess y'all up. They said that because all the people had begun to cry as they were listening to the message of God in the law. Nehemiah said, go, listen, and enjoy the good food and sweet drinks. It did not say sweet tea. In the other verse, it said, go get you some. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me get that part because you know how we'll be like, you know how people will get and I had to just tell you this part. It said, don't feel bad. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Go home and prepare a feast, holiday food and drink, and share it with people that don't have it to eat. So he not only wants you to go and have victory, it says, Go and share what you have for people that don't have what you have. Joy, go on live for the people that don't have the joy of the Lord, which is their strength. Go on live and share some of that joy that you have. Whatever it is that you have that's positive, go and share it. But this is what it got me. It said, this day is holy to God. Don't feel bad. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The Levites calm the people down. Quiet now. This is a holy day. Don't be upset. So the people went off feasting, eating, drinking, including poor and great cele celebration. Now they got it. They understood the reading that had been given to them. A lot of times I've seen so many people in this lifetime quote a bunch of scriptures, right? They be mean as hell. They don't have no joy. They miserable. So they don't even know what the hell they are reading. You got to get an understanding of what Big Daddy said. If joy is your strength, why you don't have none? You're wondering and you keep blaming everything on Satan. Satan said, uh-uh, 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 that's not me. You not having joy and you allowing different things to come to steal your joy. That's on you. You got to know that no matter what, there's power in joy and you got to protect let me tell y'all, y'all know I love Wonder Woman. Now, y'all know I love Wonder Woman. So, when stuff came Wonder Woman way, she ain't sweat. She ain't sweat her lace front out. Hold on. She ain't sweat it out. She just like, beep, 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 beep. You better know how to block it. You got to know who's your strength. You got to know who's your keeper. Blink, blink. Y'all be letting too much get into you and rob you of your joy. You already know. Foolishness going to come. I know it's some people that pretend like they walk on clouds and walk on ice and walk on water and nothing ever touched them since they gave themselves to Christ. Well, I'm not that chick because I can tell y'all some stuff that happened to me when I gave him a yes. Okay, so I'm here to tell you this. Put on your best. That particular day. They gave them permission to eat what they want to eat and drink what they want to eat. Me, myself, I'm going to get me a mimosa with the little cherries on top. And I'm going to eat something joy want to eat. Why, Joy? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. I love you guys. Sorry so long. Have an amazing day. Mwah.